Well, I, I started as an actor, as you know, I worked for a little bit in uh, Bollywood, but then I went back to university and um, started working as an investigative journalist. And I was doing a program uh, with a, a documentary team from America and Canada. And we were looking at the connections between the Russian mafia, really senior Russian mafia godfathers and key players in what's called the National Hockey League, which is more or less our surrogate religion here in, in Canada and America. Certainly in Canada it is. Anyway, number of these Russian godfathers had clear, substantiated connections with key players, really, really big star players. And one of those guys... Uh, we interviewed uh, in his offices just near the Kremlin in uh, in Moscow. And then he took us for, for, for dinner in a Georgian restaurant. Well, he didn't take us. He invited us. A number of the crew didn't want to go. Uh, my mentor, who's a brilliant journalist, said, look, when the head of the Russian mafia, the man, U.S. Congress, says this guy runs organized crime in Moscow, Russia, you got to go. So he and I went. And during that conversation, and it was quite an intense one, and I write about it in my first book, um, The Fix, Organized Crime and Soccer. But in the midst of that conversation, I said, well, why do you like ice hockey so much? And he said, well, you know, I, I like this particular player, but the guy that I, the sport I really love is football. In fact, I was at the 1994 World Cup final in the president's box, the VVIP section. And there was about 300 people. I think uh, Al Gore, the vice president, was there. Maybe Hillary Clinton, Pele. But he was in front of them. He was in the front. Uh, Yao Havalangi, who was the then president of FIFA. Next to him was Sepp Blatter, the man who would become president of FIFA. Next to him was the president of the Russian Football Federation. And next to him was the guy that U.S. Congress would go on to say, this guy's the head of the mafia. And so I'm having dinner, it's late night in Moscow, and I'm sitting across from this guy, and I have two thoughts in my mind. First one is, I really hope I get out of this place alive. And two, if I do, I want to know what this man is doing at the very epicenter of world sport. Because as you know, and many of your listeners know, symbolically, you can't get much higher than you know, the box at the World Cup final, you know, the players will be walking past you, you know, the, 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 the cup is right there. This is, you know, for our Catholic listeners, that's like being with the with the Pope on Easter Sunday in the Vatican on, you know, as he's blessing people. I mean, this is a really powerful, powerful position. So that was the beginning of, of my look into organized crime and sport. Um, I was very, very fortunate. I was working as a journalist in Iraq during the Iraq War of 2003, and I got news that I had got a scholarship to do a PhD at the University of Oxford in the UK uh, with an amazing unit there that studied organized crime. And so I, I did my PhD there, and as part of my PhD research, I went to Singapore, Malaysia, uh, Philippines, and fell in with a gang who travels around the world fixing major football tournaments. So that's that's at least part of my journey. Player-wise, it would have to be Steven Gerrard, just because again, before before I became a, a journalist, you know, he was he was someone I just admired massively in terms of the absolute complete footballer. I think if you were trying to like make a footballer in a factory, he would it would be Steven Gerrard, someone who, you know, he, I think Jamie Carragher summed it up best once when he said, you know, Steven Gerrard's biggest strength is he doesn't have any weaknesses. Ah, the stadium. Uh, I, I don't see really uh, need to do that, mainly um, such a, a big spending. But it's true that it would be um, a fantastic stadium. That's not bad, but uh, you have to be careful. And mainly at this moment uh, when we are going to face a very difficult time.